Enhanced conversions is a feature from Google that lets you track up to 4% more conversions associated with your Google Ads campaigns. And in some cases, that 4% could mean the difference between success and failure for how your campaigns are evaluated. And the way Google does that is by sending hashed customer data to their servers whenever someone converts on your website. So in this video, we're going to look at how to set up enhanced conversions for your Shopify store. So in this case, we're going to start off by adding a small snippet of code to the order status page and then we're going to set up a conversion tag in Google Tag Manager to fire that information. So one thing I'll mention is that this does build on some information that I covered in an earlier video of mine on how to send purchase data to GA4 for Shopify. So we will be leaning on some of that existing code. So if you haven't gone through that video or you don't have that in place yet, then I highly recommend checking that out first so that you can get the most out of this video. First, we're going to get a little bit familiar with what kind of data that we're going to need here. And so to do that, we're going to go to Google Tag Manager. And in this case, let's just understand what we need before we actually place any code anywhere. So we're going to look at the Google Ads conversion tracking tag here. And these first two fields are just standard conversion tracking items like the conversion ID and label, which we're going to get from Google Ads, the conversion value, transaction ID, and currency, which we're going to get from our earlier GA4 purchase code and same with this product level sales data. And then we also see this information right or this option right here to include user provided data from your website. So this is where enhanced conversions comes in. If we check this box, it's going to ask us to provide a variable. And so if we look at the option it gives us, it's going to throw this user provided data variable type in here. And if we scroll down, the fields that it's going to ask for individually are email, phone, first name, last name, and street, city, region, country, and post postal code. So that means that we need to be able to extract all of that information from the Shopify checkout to a supplier enhanced conversion data. So with that being said, let's go ahead and discard those changes for now. And we're going to copy our snippet of code. And so in this case, I have the code snippet ready here in this tool called VS Code. And so I will mention that using this tool does make it way easier to work with snippets of code than just the Shopify order status page or any other kind of plain text editor. So shout out to my wife for turning me on to this tool. It's definitely way easier to see things. And I did struggle with some formatting stuff way longer than I should have. So definitely uh, recommend using this if you're not already. So what I'm going to do here is copy this code and I'll make sure that you can access this through a link in the description. So we're going to copy that code right there. And next we're going to go to our settings and check out and we're going to scroll down to where it says order status page. So this is where the existing code for measuring purchases is already at. And so what I'm gonna do here is before the script end tag, I'm going to paste this enhanced conversion data right here. And basically what we're doing is we're sending another event called conversion. And we're not really, we're not nullifying any of the information being sent right here because we do want the transaction data for the sake of our conversion. We just wanna make sure that we're sending this additional customer data for the enhanced conversion. The main reason why I want to send this separately too is because I don't want to send this personally identifying customer data to GA4. So now that we have this here, we're going to save our code snippet. And now we're going to go to Google Tag Manager. So the first thing that we'll do here, since it's pretty easy to knock out, is we need to fire our tag when this data is available. So that means when an event is conversion. So we're going to go to new and we're going to create a custom event and we're going to call it conversion. So I'm just going to copy it right there and we'll name this custom event conversion and it'll fire anytime conversion happens based on how we've set it up. And next we need to send all of this information that we've added here for phone number, last name and address. So I've already got all those variables built out because building those individually is going to be a bit repetitive, but I will show you how a couple of these look like. So we're going to select a new user variable and go to data layer variable. And in this case, we see here that we are setting this as enhanced conversion data. And then each of these objects nested beneath that. We do go one layer deeper for a home address. We'll show what that looks like, but let's start off with email first. So I'm going to copy enhanced conversion data, and then I'm going to copy email. And we're just going to do enhanced conversion data.email. And so we would do the same thing if we were getting the phone number or first name or last name. Any of these things is just going to be enhanced conversion data dot 
first name or dot whatever. Now, when we get to home address, things get a little bit different because you can see here that when we get to home address, we have things nested beneath another set of curly brackets. So that just means that for the sake of getting the correct information into our data layer variable, we just need to add one more dot so that we can pass all of these items individually. So in this case, if we wanted to send the street name, we would do enhanced conversion data dot home address dot street. And same thing for city, region, and postal code. So enhanced conversion data dot home address dot city, for example. So you get the idea at this point, we won't build out all those individually. We have them right here. And so next, we're going to go over to tags and we're going to bring the Google Ads conversion tag back up. And so we'll start off by filling out a lot of the standard info that we would for any other type of conversion tracking. So we're going to go to Google Ads and conversions. And this will be the conversion action that we're working with here. So first, we're going to go to tag setup and select use tag manager as our option. And we're going to copy the conversion ID and conversion label from here exactly. So we'll paste that in the conversion ID field and we'll paste this in the conversion label field. And again, this is where the previous video comes into play. But for conversion value, we're going to send the e-commerce value variable that we're already collecting for someone's subtotal value. And for transaction ID, we're going to use our transaction ID variable and same thing for currency. So next, we'll do one more thing here that ties into standard conversion tracking, but we're going to check this box for product level sales data. And for now, we'll just include items. This is the variable which you can actually see right here, which is going to send data about each individual product included in someone's order. So we'll have this for our Google Ads conversion tracking now. And Finally, now we get to the point where we can talk about new customer data or our actual enhanced conversion step. So we're going to check this box. Sorry, not new customer data, user provided data from your website. So we're going to check that box and we'll say new variable and it brings up this user provided data variable type again. So we'll say UPD and we're using it for Google ads. We'll say enhanced ecom. We'll open that up and now we're just going to go down each of these one by one and select the data layer variables that we created for this. So we're going to go to enhanced conversion data dot email and enhanced conversion data dot phone number and we're going to keep going down the line. So first name, last name, street, city, probably going to speed this up because it's a little tedious, region, country, and postal code. So now that we have all those values, we can save this. And the last thing that we need to do here before we can use this is to add in our conversion trigger. And then we'll name this. I like to always include the portion of the website in the tag name, just so we can know where you know things actually fit contextually. And we'll call this Google Ads conversion purchase. And we'll save that. One thing I will mention is that I didn't cover this earlier, but in order to fire our Google Ads conversion tags, we'll need a conversion linker tag also. And those are pretty easy to set up. We'll just click this conversion linker option right here and set it to fire on all pages, and then we can save. So I'm not going to save this since I already have one, but that's all you need to do. So now that we have all that information, let's go ahead and publish this and we'll test our tag to make sure that all the data is flowing in there correctly. So we'll do a preview. And so we'll go ahead and add a couple items to our card. So we'll add in the hoodie and we'll add in the hat. And now we're ready to check out. So everything that we're entering right here and this part of the checkout is information that should be sent as hashed data for our enhanced conversion. So we should expect to see all this stuff pop up in the data layer later. So now we'll go over to our shipping and enter in our payment info. And so at this point, so we should see all of the shipping information or all the, the billing information actually pop up in the data layer. So we do see that the conversion event is here right after purchase. And so if I open this up, then we can see all of the information is being passed into the data layer correctly. And this is also what the actual transaction data looks like as well. So we're actually gonna be carrying both of those things into our conversion tag. So if I open up our tag, we do see that the conversion purchase tag fired here successfully also. And and if I expand this up, we're just including all the values here in the tag. So we see that our enhanced conversion data is all here exactly as we'd expect. And if we go down, we can also see that our item level information is being passed in here too. At this point, we have almost everything we need for enhanced conversions. So don't go just yet. There's actually one more step in here. We're going to go to our conversion right here. And we need to make sure that this box for turning on enhanced conversions is checked. Then 
we're going to select a Google tag or tag manager as our option. And it's going to ask us for a URL. It's not going to be able to crawl my dev site. So I'm just going to choose this option to select one manually and we'll choose tag manager. And at that point, we can save. Mine was already set up like that, so it won't let me save, but you can save. And at this point, we're finally done and we have everything that we need to measure enhanced conversion data on Shopify. So if you made it all the way here, I'd hugely appreciate it if you like and subscribe. There's gonna be more content coming out like this every week. So I hugely appreciate you watching and thanks so much.